Have you ever wondered what it would be like to run across Christians who took Jesus seriously? I mean, Christians who embrace those red letters of the Bible, those words of Jesus, those hard words, those words about loving your enemies, of giving your money away to the poor, of turning the other cheek, of overcoming evil with good, all of those red letters of the Bible, that's what this program's about. You're going to be meeting young people who are doing that, people who have taken Jesus at His word, who are living out the Sermon on the Mount in this day and age. You're about to meet a person who will change your life. Welcome, everybody. Glad you're with us. We're going to talk about Red Letter Christianity, and we're going to introduce you to somebody who's a Red Letter Christian. There yeah. you go. And I'm Mark Lowry, and this is Tony Campolo. That's his name right there, Biggest Day. Yeah. And what is Red Letter Christianity, and where did it come from? Are you trying to start a movement at your age? Y yes, 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 yes. But I'm not depending on anybody else except Jesus to work through young people. Oh. And we're going to be meeting a lot of young people on these shows as the weeks unfold. But one of them today is going to be Jenna Nardella. She's yes. a neat person. We're going to talk about her. Uh, but when you want to, want to know about where the whole concept came from, yeah. there are a lot of young people who are kind of tired with the old labels. They're even tired of the word evangelical, even though they are evangelical. Because if they're going to Harvard or they're going to Yale or, or University of Pennsylvania, uh, and they say they're, an evan they're evangelicals, all these red flags go up. People say, oh... You hate gays. You are opposed to women. Uh, you are pro-war. Uh, you are into uh, the materialistic... No, no, no. That's not what we're about. And we said, we want to be faithful to Scripture. We want to be faithful to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we were talking on one show, uh, a, a country and western secular Jewish disc jockey in Nashville, Tennessee said, oh, you guys or into the red letters of the Bible. You know, those red letters, the, the, the words of Jesus are highlighted in the Bible in red letters. You're into the words of Jesus. We said, that's it. We're going to adopt the word. So that's where it came so from. So it's really an old concept because somebody years ago decided to highlight the words of Jesus in red, which almost makes them look like they're more important than the black letters. And you're not saying that, are you? I am. You are? Yeah, and the reason why I'm saying that is because Jesus said it. Jesus said, I know what the Old Testament teaches. I know what's written in the uh, Torah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. I give you a new commandment. Yeah. Now, without being nasty, when he says it's a new commandment, I think he means it's a new commandment. Uh, to love. To love your enemies. To overcome evil with good. Yeah. Um, as I have loved you. You know, exactly. early on he said, love your neighbor as yourself. Once he realized humans don't love ourselves, yeah. he said, let's back up and try this again. As I have loved you. That's you pretty profound. Me. I never well, heard that. I either. learned that from Stan Mitchell at Grace Point Church. I want to give Whoa. credit where credit is due. Yeah. But I thought, that not that interesting? That really is. As I have loved you, yeah. would you yeah. love others? What we're really saying with Red Letter Christianity is we're not sure you can really understand the Bible until you come to know Jesus Christ. You really can't. I mean, um, if you read the Bible as good literature, and there are courses in many colleges and universities that do that, they just, you know, it's good literature. It's not just good literature. It is the inspired Word of God. Yes. And here's what we're out to say. When you come to know Jesus, you'll understand the Scriptures, because only by knowing the author will you know what the red letters and the rest of the Bible is all about. Right. You've got to read the Bible through the eyes of Christ. Through the lens of Jesus. Let me tell you about our guest today. Yes. Jenna Nardella. Mm -hmm. She's not Italian, even though it sounds Italian. She married an Italian. Okay. But she's very young. She doesn't look old enough to be married. Mm -mm. And she looks like a, you know, a teeny bopper in her yeah. 15 years of age. <laughs> but she is doing this thing with a music group called Jars of Clay in which they are working to bring water wells to people in third world countries. Do you know Jars of Clay? Oh, yes. Tell me about them. Well, Did they're you? a contemporary Christian group, and of course I'm a little old to follow them real closely. You know, I'm in the Gaither 
age bracket. Oh my goodness. You have to get to a Gaither concert yeah. early to get a handicapped yeah. parking yeah. spot. <laughs> okay. But uh, <laughs> Jars of Clay draws all the young people and all the wonderful, uh, you know, they've got a good audience. of and Obviously that's how she heard of them and yeah. then they were connected and have got this incredible ministry. Yeah. Um, well, of bringing water. Yeah. Can you imagine turning on your sink yeah. and there was no water? And she's making a big difference in this world. Yes. And uh, her group, Jars of Clay, are making a big difference in this world. And we're going to learn all about them today. And young people out there are going to be inspired as to what they can do. Great. And we got a video. A video of her. Is it time for the video? Let's Here play we the go. video. Letter Christianity is back with you. And this is Jenna. Hi, Jenna. Hi. And tell me about Blood Water. What this first of all, how did you get involved in this? I was a college senior when I met Jars of Clay and mm -hmm. I heard their passion for Blood Water Mission. It was their idea. Um, when they went to Africa, they realized that there were two things that Africa needed most, and that was clean blood, blood free from HIV, and clean water. And it's also symbolic because when Jesus hung from the cross and the spear was pierced into his side, it was blood and water that flowed from his side as a symbol of life-giving sacrifice. And in the same way, Africa still needs the physical elements of blood and water for, for abundant life. Well, Jesus said, when you give a cup of water in my name, and all of us can do that. And that's what's so interesting. Most of the money that is raised for your organization comes through young people who may be watching this just like you watching this and, and they're drilling wells is that it yeah i mean we are partnering with communities all over africa to provide safe water in places where people don't have access to water so it's drilling wells providing rainwater catchment tanks other things like sanitation having places for people to go to the bathroom hand washing all kinds of health interventions in places where people don't have access to that what is the relationship between water and aids i mean you've been talking about these two things. We're going to address the AIDS crisis and, and uh, we're going to do with, what's the relationship between water and AIDS? It's interesting because we originally started Blood Water Mission as a response to HIV and we spent time in communities in Africa and said, what are the ways that you as a community wants to, want to address AIDS? And they said, we need help with water. And I didn't understand the connection either, but what they were saying is people who are HIV positive, their immune system is so weak that if they drink bad water, it will actually 
uh, kill them. There, it, it's something as simple as diarrhea will end up killing them. Children under the age of five are the ones that are dying the most. The other thing that we found is that when people have time, which they don't, when they don't have water, they have to walk miles to find water. If they don't have time for that, then they aren't able, they aren't able to care for their community and care for the sick. Uh, how many wells have you, you people, you working with George, yeah. how many wells have you drilled and what is your plan for the future and how many people are being impacted? Could you give us some ugly things called statistics? statistics? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> well, when we first started with Flood Water Mission, our dream was for a thousand communities to have access to safe water. And that was a huge dream. And I thought, this, this is crazy. We can't do this. And Dan Hasseltine, the lead singer of Jars of Clay, said, Jenna, a thousand is a number that only God is comfortable with. So if it happens, we know that it will be of God and not of us. And we are going to be completing a thousand wells by May of this coming year. And so we are oh, thrilled. Wow. And then what happens? Another thousand? Yeah, we've you know, said maybe we'll add a zero and just keep going. Because <laughs> yeah. there's so many communities, so many friends, brothers and sisters that are still still in need of it. But what's so neat is that we get to celebrate all of these communities that have access to water, but it's their projects and they're doing the work. Uh -huh. We just get to come alongside them. I understand that so far this has impacted 700,000 people in Africa. That's correct. And uh, most of the money that has uh, come into this movement to drill these wells have come from young people. Did you know that? Right. Uh, that, uh, how did they do that? I mean, it costs what to drill a well? I mean, it could be anywhere between three thousand or twenty-five thousand dollars. Depends community. on how deep you have to. Yeah, go. it depends on where you are, what country, how deep you have to drill. But what's I think what's amazing about Bloodwater Mission is that we were overwhelmed by statistics too. We're young people. What do you do when you hear these huge numbers? It's right. you can't even put a face to to a, a number. And so we heard that a dollar would provide a year of water for someone in Africa. And it changed everything for us because it, it helped us to think about one person, one brother, one sister, maybe someone we've never met before, but we can think of that and I can do something with a dollar. How, how are young people raising this money? Yeah. I mean, I, I understand that most of your money comes from young people, yeah. teenagers, mostly teenagers. It's all about and creativity. How much, money, how much money has come in? I mean, millions, seven million dollars. Whoa, from young people. Young people. It's all about creativity. So, I mean, we have kids all over the country doing lemonade stands. We have people who've ridden their bike across America. We have people who do benefit concerts and run 5Ks and, um, you know, give up beverages during Lenten season and all the money they would have spent on coffee and soda, they save that and they send it in to provide the essential beverage for someone in Africa. Yeah, and uh, that's, that's, really, that's really impressive kinds of stuff. You know, just a little statistic for you. Sure. And they often say the church is not making a big difference. It's making a huge difference. Most of the wells that have been dr drilled in the world have been drilled by Christian groups like jars of clay. Let me give you the fact, the figure. 25 years ago, one out of every six persons on the planet had no access to clean drinking water. Today, it's one out of 12. We've improved the situation 100% oh. because of groups like jars of clay because of people like Jenna Nardella and the work she's doing with Jars of Clay. So it don't run down the Christian community. I mean, it's for all of its problems, it's got a lot going for it. St. Augustine once said, the church is a whore, but she's my mother. What a great line. We recognize how unfaithful the church has been in so many ways, but at the same time, she's the mother. She's the one that brought us to know Jesus. She's the one that gave us the scriptures. Don't run down the church because the church is a great instrument and you're a good example of this. You actually go to Africa? I do, and... yeah. I spend as much time as I can over there because we really believe in relationships. And I think that one of the things we want to do is not just be handouts or not just send money places. What was the first thing that hit you on your first trip to Africa yeah. to one of these communities? What, what in, I mean, you must have that shock experience. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think it might be surprising to say, but it was to realize how similar we are. Uh -huh. And I mean, to be overwhelmed by poverty and to see an environment that's different than something that I've grown up in. But then to realize when you sit down over a cup of tea together and you hear stories, you recognize that these are creative, compassionate, hardworking, caring people that um, I just want to get to know more of. The dignity of people in Africa always impressed me. The way they walk, the way mm -hmm. they carry themselves, the way they speak. Mm -hmm. Poor, beaten down, victims of colonialism. Through it all, 
especially among the Christians. There's a sense of joy. There's a sense of radiant aliveness in Christ that I, I find really, uh, really attractive. Uh, are there any ways that young people can become personally involved? I mean, raising money is one way. I guess that's the primary way. That's the primary way, but it's, it's less about the money and it's more about the voice. And mm. it's, it's giving young people an opportunity to have their own platform here in the States. Sometimes I feel like we need to be rescued from our own trivia. Okay. And this has just been a beautiful opportunity as communities to come together, to work together against something um, as horrific as AIDS and, and extreme poverty with water. But, um, but we just love seeing people come together, get your youth group, you know, getting your family and, and your school to, to come together and say, you know what, we're going to use our voice for something and, and let people know about these issues in Africa because these people are our brothers and sisters. And as the world is globalizing and you can, you know, get on the internet and meet people online or all these different things, the concept of neighbor is actually changing. And we want to know our neighbors and, and encourage other people to know them as well. You're wearing a red letter Christian bracelet. I'm wearing mine. Mine isn't very visible. I'd better get it out there. Where yeah, get it out. Can see it. Yeah, there, there's my red letter. <laughs> I want to know, I'm sure Mark would want to know how she became a Christian yeah. and how she got connected. Maybe you could with jars of clay. Yeah, how did that happen? Um, I grew up in San Francisco. I grew up in a very wealthy home and um, hadn't spent much time in the city. And I was nine years old and my mom took me into San Francisco for the first time. And I remember walking down the street and it was the first time that I met a homeless man. And it rocked my world because I didn't understand why someone was hungry because I was always fed. I had a mommy and a daddy who fed me. Right. And he was saying that he hadn't eaten in three days. And people kept walking past him and there was no that was listening and so it just broke my heart and at nine years old I went to went to dinner with my mom and I sat there and I couldn't eat my food and my mom said is this for that man and I said yes and so we walked through the streets of San Francisco looking for him so I could give him my cold hamburger <laughs> but but ultimately that really shaped my worldview at nine years old and and really the way that I came to know Jesus was that he also cared about that man on the street and it was his story and and his passion that was it it made me see oh my gosh he cares about people who are hungry he cares about people about people who are marginalized and 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 not paid attention to by the world and so that's really how i started he i mean jesus was my my social justice hero before he was my savior but mm. it was something that he um, he was who i wanted to be like you and, you said something really profound right there because I find this true with a lot of young people, that Jesus first becomes a hero for social justice, and then they realize it's more than that. Mm -hmm. You've got to have this personal, transforming relationship with mm -hmm. Christ. But I, I, in, in our ministries, uh, we, we work in Haiti, we work in nine different poor neighborhoods across America. How many young people come and work with us only to find that they weren't really Christians and when they found the presence of Christ in people who were poor and needy, they suddenly realized Jesus wasn't just up there in the sky. Mm -hmm. Jesus was a living presence, and he could enter into their lives and transform them and make them into new people. What you said was very important. So many young people come to know Jesus because they first get involved in social justice issues and find it's got to be more than that. It's got to be much more than that. You know, young people are always asking what they can do. Yeah. And here's something they can do. And one of the things I love about Jars of Clay and about you, Jenna, is that uh, you're young people who recognize the inadequacies of the church, but at the same time say the church is the best instrument that exists on this planet mm -hmm. for changing the world that is into the world that ought to be. Mm -hmm. You know, one of uh, my students at Eastern University where I teach, uh, was asked by a lady in her church, doesn't the Bible say the poor you will have with you always? Why are you trying to attack poverty when the poor you will have with you always? And his response was, oh, are you with the poor always? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How much time do we spend with the poor? And your statement was a heavy one. It was when you were with a poor man on the streets of San Francisco that you realized what Christ was calling you to do wow. and what Christ was calling you to be. That is great. Yeah, Mark, is there something else you want to ask of this brilliant young woman that we have? Well, what do you see for your future uh, 
with blood water, are just continuing? Mm -hmm. to, you want to do this for the rest of your life? I, I love it. And, and really, our dream is just to get more people to come and, and be on this journey with us. And we want to step more into our projects in HIV and supporting communities there. Um, we're not going anywhere. In the places where we've done the thousand communities of water, we want to support with HIV too. So we're going to be stepping into much more health there. But we need a lot more people in the states to come and, and come alongside us in doing it. 14 million children in Africa are orphaned because of the AIDS crisis. It's an overwhelming problem. Mm. And uh, here's a group of Christians who are saying, we're not just going to moan and groan, we're going to make a difference. And what a huge difference you're making. Mm. Because you're into the there they are. Red letters of the Bible. Yep. This is your Bible, mm -hmm. and you got one that has red letters in it. <laughs> Praise God for that. And, uh, you know, we're so glad you're here. We're so glad you're on this show. Thanks, uh, Mark, do you meet many young people like this? No. I no. don't either. No, but I, I meet some that, I mean, I think all of us have a desire to matter. Yeah. And the important thing is, there are not many like you, but yeah. it doesn't take many to change the world. Yeah. The world has been changed by small groups of people, by persons like Jenna, and you don't a have to red start. letter Christian. Yeah. Glad to have you on the show. God bless you. Tony, you've been to Africa. I've been to South Africa. You've been all over Africa. What have you seen there? Well, I've been in Zimbabwe specifically. We actually, our organization, uh, has a, a program in Africa, uh, in Zimbabwe. But uh, the water thing that Jenna was talking about, um, it, it's, it's incredible because, uh, because of lousy water, diseased water, cholera breaks out in Zimbabwe with regularity. And when people have cholera and then have AIDS, their death is almost immediate. Oh. It's almost because they have no immune system because they have been dealing with this stuff. Right. Uh, so that's what we've seen. Yeah. And what would you, if I always try to think, if I was a teenager watching this on the internet or on TV, how can I get involved with what Jenna's doing? I mean, what, how can I participate in that? Do you need good yeah. examples? Well, I, I can give you one great example oh. of a youth group that wanted to raise money for Africa for water. Mm -hmm. And to kind of communicate what it was all about, they had learned that the typical African woman walks three miles to get clean water to use for cooking and for uh, hygiene. So what they decided to do, the whole youth group, each got a bucket of water and carried it for two miles. Really? And they got sponsors to, to, you know, to support them for each mile that they went. But they were exhausted carrying just a a, a pail of water. Yeah. What a great thing to do. And, and it made a great impact on the community because they went right down Main Street of their town carrying these buckets of water. And they're like, what are these kids doing carrying these buckets of water? And they had a chance to share what they were doing uh, with the people who asked them questions. And relate to the suffering. Yeah, but they had no idea. Uh. You know, they say, you have to walk two miles, three miles to yeah. get a pail of water. And you say, boy, that's a long walk. The walk is not the problem. It's the water. weight of carrying a bucket of water that far. We had, they had no idea, and it raised a lot of money. People on the street that saw them coming, you know, they said, are you willing to give a contribution? The last person in line had an empty bucket, and people were throwing money in it as oh. they went down the main street, and they carried signs. Guy up front had a sign explaining the whole thing. So, I mean, there's all kinds of creative things that young people can do to raise money uh, to minister to people who have water needs in third world countries. And if you have a greater idea, you can go to redletterchristianity.org. Christians. Redletterchristians.org. Red Christianity. No, the red letter. Red letter Christians.org. And you can learn more about blood water mission. And, and they have ideas on their website too to give you yeah. information on how you can help. Yeah, you go to redletterchristians.org and then go down, down and you'll come to uh, this blood, colon, water mission. Um, Mark, you're on the road all the time. Uh, people come up to you and say, do you remember me? Oh. What, do you, what do you say in situations? Well, if I do remember their face, I'll never remember a name. I'm 52, I can't hardly remember my name. But I, uh, 
if I remember the face, I, but I quit lying. I used to lie about it because yeah. I'm Baptist. We can lie and still go to heaven. Yeah. I used to <laughs> say, oh, yeah, how you doing? Until one kid came up to me one time and said, hey, do you remember me? And I said, yeah, how you doing? He said, you've never seen me before. Oh, boy, that got you down. Oh, and I said, no more lying for me. So I'm say, usually I say, no, I'm sorry. You have to help me. The line I use, uh, a lady came up to me about, about a year ago, and since then I've been using this line, said, do you remember me? And I said, madam, in order to get any work done, I had to put you out of my oh, mind. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. Do the old fire. Listen, uh, I'm funny. so glad uh, that Jenna was here. And I'm yes. So glad you're sharing this show with me because uh, we need to promote Red Letter Christians. Yeah. People can argue theology all they want, but when you come to the Red Letters of the Bible, you have to face this. Gandhi said it well. Everybody knows what Jesus taught except for Christians. Mm. It's about time we go to the Sermon on the Mount and ask whether or not what is written there in red letters applies to how we should live our lives in today's world. And we will see you next time. Next time. We're done. Blessings on you. Keep the faith.